we are going to talk about RVing with dogs. Yep. And these are things that, you know, we take into consideration, um, but we wanted to pass along some of that information to you guys. And we're also going to talk about all the dog gadgets that Leo loves. We did write an article where we talked about buying an RV with our dogs in mind. And that article is linked in the description below. And that will also include a lot of the topics that we're talking about today. So if you want to read it, you can go ahead and check out the article below. So one of the reasons we decided to make this video is because we've gotten a lot of dog owners that have reached out to us with a lot of questions about what it's like to RV with dogs, especially large dogs <laughs> and hairy large dogs. Uh, so we're going to talk about how we do it and hopefully this will be some really good information for you to think about. On a travel day when we're moving from one place to another, before we get on the road, even if it's just a short drive, we make sure to take Leo for a really nice walk make sure he's taken care of all of his business. And then we leave about half of his water bowl full so uh -huh. that he always has water. And he's always moving around when we're driving. Sometimes he's in the passenger seat area. Sometimes he's on the couch or he's on his bed, but he does like to get up and go get water. So we always make sure he has that. We do take advantage of rest areas and that not only for ourselves, but for him. So if we're driving for more than an hour or so, we like to stop let him get out, take him for a walk, and kind of stretch his legs because he gets tired of driving just like we do. Now when you get to a rest area, make sure to pay attention to the signs and what the rules are regarding dogs. A lot of them don't allow dogs in the main area and you have to take them off to a side like plot of grass or you know whatever the dog run is that they've kind of put aside. Now let's talk about going to a campground with your dog. Most campgrounds we've encountered allow dogs. However, they sometimes have restrictions on how big, so how many pounds they weigh, and also the breed. Uh -huh. We've not come across a campground where Leo hasn't been allowed, but we did stay at a campground in Florida that had a weight restriction and large dogs had to be pre-approved by the park manager. Luckily, Leo was approved and loved by everybody, but that's something to consider and keep in mind when you're at a campground. For those of you who might own, let's say a Rottweiler, German Shepherd, Pitbull, unfortunately, there are a lot of places that have preconceived notions about these dogs and won't allow them on the property. So it's always good to call ahead and ask a campground or wherever you're staying what their dog policy is so you know before you go and the other thing is sometimes they charge extra it's one of our favorite dry camping spots in ventura charges a dollar per dog and the other thing to ask for too is you know can you bathe your dog at the campground some will allow it others won't the good thing is there are self-wash dog places all over the country that we've seen mm -hmm. so if we needed to we could always bathe him there and as we travel around the country, we've also increased the number of tick and flea treatments Leo gets. So whereas before we used to give him a treatment every three months, now that we're traveling full time and we go to a lot of places that have active ticks, uh, we give him a treatment once a month. And the other thing too is we get him tested for heartworms, which leads me to our next topic, which is finding a veterinarian on the road. Now we've had to take Leo into the vet once. He ate something and got himself pretty sick. But again, we had to call around and find a vet that we were comfortable with. Um, if your dog has health problems or you think something might be up, it's always good to call ahead. Just see what vets are around in case you need to take your dog in. Um, you know, we've been pretty lucky with Leo so far. It's only been one incident, but you know, we're always a lot more cognizant now that we get into a new town of what's around and what services there are. Another question we get asked all the time is, what do we do with Leo when we go places? Um, that's another thing to consider when you're going into a new town and some of the activities that you want to do. We always call ahead when we're trying to plan things to figure out you know, are they dog friendly? We'll ask if a restaurant has a dog friendly patio or a place we can go, what the park situation is like. Um, we're in Wisconsin right now and we found that most of the parks, if not all of them, that we've stumbled across in Wisconsin are not dog friendly. You cannot take your dog to a park. And this is a state or county park, not a campground. Most of the time we try to incorporate Leo into our daily activities. If we go to a new restaurant or something, we try to make sure that they have a patio and we can take Leo. He likes to hang out there. Now there are times he just can't come along. One great example is when we went to Disney World. We were staying at Fort Wilderness and what we would do is we'd get the RV set up, we'd take him for a couple long walks in the morning, 
and then we'd make sure the AC was on or if it was cool out, we'd open all the windows, turn the fans on, and he would kind of nap during the day while we were at the park. We would come back for a late lunch, take him for another couple walks, feed him uh, early dinner, and then we would go back to the park for another few hours. The max we like to leave him alone in the RV is about five hours. That's his comfort level. And when we get back, he, you know, we take him for an immediate walk, let him go to the bathroom, give him more water. A few other points about leaving dogs in the RV. The first being, before we go out, we always check the weather to see what it's gonna be like that day. Uh, there are times we'll leave the windows open rather than putting the AC on because it's so nice outside. But if we know it's gonna be very hot and sunny, We'll close the windows, put the blinds down, and crank up the AC. Now that it is summertime, we try to find a lot more campgrounds where we can plug into the shore power and easily be able to run the AC all day long to keep him happy. We also try not to leave him on, you know, like 4th of July or right around that area. We'll plan to be somewhere where we can stay with him, hang out, uh, so the fireworks going off don't really freak him out, but if they do, we're there with him and he's not stuck in the RV all by himself. Now there are a lot of businesses and places around the country that are really dog friendly and we love supporting them because we chose this lifestyle so we could travel with our dogs and Leo absolutely loves it. So some of the places that come to mind immediately for me is the Pima Air Museum in Tucson. Leo even got to ride the tram. I mean, the museum was so dog friendly. Everybody loved him. He could go in the hangars, walk around and check out all the airplanes with us. Another place is Dinosaur World. They were, <laughs> they were really dog friendly. Unfortunately, we didn't bring Leo. We left him in the RV with the AC running because it was so hot that day. Um, there are also places like the Kennedy Space Center where they have a dog kennel on site where you can keep your dog while you're exploring. Um, and one of my favorite dog friendly areas is probably Flagstaff. Yeah, Flagstaff was a great city to take your dogs. All the breweries had outdoor patios that were dog friendly. People came out with dog biscuits for Leo. And our favorite was a great coffee shop called Higher Ground. And we could bring Leo in and enjoy coffee, work for the day, and then go hang out. Now there are some downsides to traveling with a dog. Uh, one of the things we run into is there are activities we would like to do, but we can't because we have Leo. We prefer not to board him, so there are activities that might take us the whole day to be gone. Uh, so we just have chosen not to do those. If we really want to, yes, we can board him or we could find someone to come and house it. I think the issue is if you're in a new city, you don't know anyone, who are you going to trust to leave with your dog and your RV and all your worldly possessions. Now another thing to consider is things like dog food. Is your dog food local to you or is it something you can buy nationwide? Uh, we get all of our dog food from Costco so whenever we hit a Costco and we're running low we'll always pick up a bag. Now one thing to plan for that we really didn't do when we started full timing is what happens if you get displaced from your RV? For example, we had to spend two nights out of our RV when we were at Newmar getting service work done. Uh, fortunately, they had recommended hotels that took dogs, but that's something to consider because not every hotel will allow dogs. Um, and whereas in our case, we had to pay a $25 dog fee and request a specific room on the first floor because Leo will not go anything higher than the first, <laughs> first floor. Um, so that's something to take into consideration. Hopefully you don't ever have to be displaced from your RV, but it can happen and it's good to know what your options are. Yeah, I will say it's very likely that you could be displaced from your RV. Uh, reason being is RVs have to get work done, just like a car or anything else, getting oil changed, certain maintenance work. If you have in issues inside of the coach, um, you know, you're gonna have to deal with those on the road. And for the most part, dealers will try to get you in and out in a day, but there are times where you're gonna have to leave your RV a night, a few nights. If it's something major, it's going to have to be longer than that when you're on the road with your dog. What are you gonna do if you have to be out of the RV for a few nights or a couple weeks? Another thing to prepare for and think about is what happens in an emergency. For example, we went through a tornado warning in Florida, and we'll link to that video here. But a tornado touched down 30 miles 
away from where we were camped. We got alerts on the phone about the severe weather and the tornado warning that was issued, and we had to get ready. Now for us, we were pretty much ready, but the other thing we had to worry about was making sure Leo was ready to go, making sure we had enough food for him, but also we have a special harness by Roughwear that we put on him and that gives us the ability to lift him up when we need to and help him get around. And it gives us better control of Leo so that he can't break out of his leash or slip out of it. So that leads us into the next part of the discussion, which is some of our favorite gadgets for Leo. The first one being the Roughwear Webmaster Harness. We'll put a link in the description below, but that thing has been fantastic for hiking with Leo, um, emergency situations, and just times when we want to have more control over him in um, busy or crowded areas. One of my favorite must-have things for RVing with large dogs is the airtight container that we use for Leo's food. We've not had any problems with the food going bad or critters getting in. We've heard stories from friends who have had rodents get into the bays, eat the food, uh, or insects. So ants, things like that get into the bays, and then it's really hard to clean out. We do have a store on our website at wertheroosters.com where we have a list of all the Leo approved uh, dog products that if you wanna check it out, now for those of you who are watching this and wondering if you can RV with dogs, I think that's something we searched for and kind of pondered for a long time before ever starting this lifestyle. In our opinion, absolutely. We would not trade it for the world. We love being with Leo all the time. He loves seeing all the new cities. When we arrive at a new campground or new place, he's up on the dash, he's looking around, he's excited. He loves to travel and we would not change a thing. There have been a few places we haven't been able to go because we had them, but that's fine. There's so many other places we can take them and having a dog on the road with you is great. I hope you found our RV with dogs video really informative and helpful. Uh, if you want to watch a video about Leo and his travels with us, we did make one uh, while we were in Florida and we will link to that video here.